Okay, so this tutorial is going to um, go through empirical and molecular formula and uh, how we use them and what they're used for. So, um, it's important to remember at the start that the empirical formula is of a substance is the simplest whole number ratio of the atoms of each element in the substance. Okay, it's the simplest whole number ratio. So, for example, um, glucose has a molecular formula of C6. H12O6. Okay, so that's the molecular formula of glucose. But it's got an empirical formula of C H2O. It's the simplest whole ratio uh, whole number ratio of these atoms um, that we can get. Okay? So um, when we are working out empirical formula, there's a very um, stringent uh, set of steps that we're going to look at. Okay, we're going to look at that now. So here's our example question. Uh, a compound contains 38.7% calcium, 20% phosphorus, and 41.3% oxygen by mass. The molar mass of a compound of the compound <clears throat> is 310. So calculate its empirical formula and its molecular formula. Now, um, this bit is important. The molar mass of the compound is 310, but we're not going to use that until we come to work at the molecular formula. Okay, so we're going to stick with what we've got up here first. So the very first step we're going to do is identify what elements we have present. We've got calcium, phosphorus, and oxygen, as the question says. The next thing we're going to do is um, identify how much of each thing we've got. And we're told that we have 38.7% of that, 20% of that, and 41.3% of that. Now, obviously, a percentage is something that's out of 100. Uh, and we need to get this into um, grams, okay, to use as a mass. So in order to do that, we got to think that if we had 100 grams of our compound, then 38.7 grams of it would be calcium, and 20 grams of it would be phosphorus, and 41.3 grams of it would be oxygen. Okay, because it's out of 100. So again, we've got these same numbers in terms of uh, mass. Okay, and we're ready to start working with them now. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, or the next thing we're going to do, sorry, is we're going to divide the mass by the atomic mass, relative atomic mass for each of these things. So calcium is 40.1, phosphorus is 31.0, and oxygen is 16.0. And you can find those in your periodic, periodic tables. Okay. So if we divide each of these numbers by each of these masses by their relative atomic mass, we get these values here. Now, in order to find out what ratio we have these things in in our compound, we're going to divide each of these three things, each of these three values, by the smallest value present. In this case, that's 0.65. So we're going to divide each of these things, th these three things, by 0.65. And when we do that, we get this. This is our ratio of moles now. Okay, our ratio of moles. And we've got 1.5 moles of this, one of phosphorus, and four moles of oxygen. Now, we cannot use a 0.5 uh, number. Okay, so if you if you do this calculation here and you work out that it's it's uh, 1.01, .01, then you round down to 1. If it turns out to be 1.97, you round up to 2. So we do round to the nearest whole number, but this is just too big uh, a difference. We cannot round up from this, okay? It's not... Um, I'll tell you why in a second. So what we do to get rid of this decimal point, then, is we're going to multiply all of these by 2, because that'll get rid of this. So if we do that, we get um, these numbers here. We get 3, 2, and 8. So these are our ratio of moles of each of these three things. So that means we have 3 of calcium, 2 of phosphorus, and 8 of oxygen. Therefore, our, our empirical formula for this is Ca3P2O8. So that's our empirical formula. Now, the reason that we can't have a 1.5 here is because if we did, we would have this instead. We'd have Ca1.5PO4. Now, we, cannot obvi we obviously cannot have a 1.5 there. So we need to get rid of that by multiplying all these up by 2, okay? So that's the reason that we have to times that by 2, to get rid of that 1.5, okay? So that's our empirical formula sorted. That is our empirical formula. Done. So part B is to find out the molecular formula. Now, if we just go back to this, it says that the molar mass of the compound is 310. Now, what we've got to realise here is that the molecular mass is also known as the molar mass, Okay, so the molar mass is the same as the molecular mass. And it's the mass of one mole or something. So, for example, um, the molecular mass of, um, of water is 18.02. So it's 16.0 for the oxygen and 1.01 .01 for each of the hydrogens. Therefore, one mole of water weighs 18.02 grams. So what this is telling us here is that one mole of this compound 
weighs 310 grams. So, um, what we have to do is we have to work out the empirical mass, first of all, that we have. So using this, um, this formula that we have here, we're going to work at the, the mass of this, okay, so the empirical mass. So we're going to do 3 times 40.1 for calcium, 2 times um, 31.0 for the phosphorus, and 8 times 16.0 for the oxygen. And that gives us an empirical mass of 310.3. We are told that our molecular mass is 310. So in this case, it's numerically the same as the molar mass. Okay? Um, so uh, th th so this, this is the little equation we're going to use here. So the molar mass divided by the empirical mass will tell us what sort of ratio we're looking at here. So in this case, it's going to be 310 divided by 310.3, which is obviously going to be 1. So our molecular formula is also Ca3P2O8. So it's the same as our empirical formula. Okay, let's just say, though, for argument's sake, though, that um, instead of uh, the molar mass of the compound being 310, let's say it was 620. Okay, so let's say, pretend, that the molar mass of the compound is 620. Now, if that was the case, if we divided that by the empirical mass, which is 310, we're going to get 2. Now, if that was to happen, all we do is we times each of these three things by whatever value we've got here. So in this case, it would be Ca6, um, P4, O, 16. Okay, so that would be the um, molecular formula if that was the molar mass. So that's just to bear in mind, okay? But obviously, that, that's not part of this question, though. Okay, um, so that's how we go about working out the empirical and molecular formula of something.